everyone, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch and this is a video I'm super duper excited to share with you while well, the video combined with the project that we're actually doing today. Uh, behind me here you can see a bunch of pallets and the other day, I'm just going to share this with you quickly before we get on to the project that I'm doing today, but this is the um, uh, compost kind of center uh, bins that I made, I built yesterday and it was a super duper easy project to do. Sorry about the background noise, but I have a tractor going in the background and there's a reason for that and I'll share that with you in a second. But these are some really nice pallets so it, it made the finished effect look much nicer than it would have had they been ratty ones. But initially I was planning on actually leveling it off and making it all level, but I think this actually turned out better. Now that the tractor's so loud in the background, I'll quickly show you what's going on and then I will explain what's happening, what you're seeing. Okay, so what are we doing digging big trenches in the vegetable garden? We are making hugel culture beds. So basically what a hugel culture bed is, is it is a trench, you can either do it as a trench or you can even just do it on the surface of the soil, but we are doing it as a trench. And, um, and then you fill that trench with logs and they can be of varying sizes, but the ones that you want on the bottom need to be a pretty good size. And um, what I've been learning about it as I've been researching is that you want to try to stay away from pine and other hardwoods just because they take a lot longer to decompose. I suppose that depends how long you want the bed to last for. And in, in my case, I want it to start decomposing pretty much right away. So what we did was to collect um, aspen from the forest floor and a, and a couple of um, fir branches. And what we're going to do is lay all the big logs on the bottom, some branches on the top of that, um, some hay mulch with some manure in it on the top of that to kind of fill in all the space, the gaps. And then we're going to cover it up with top soil. And then I'm going to plant all of my um, zucchini and my squash. And well, however many things I can plant in there, I'm also going to try a couple tomato plants and things like that. This is an experiment, but it's a, an experiment that has a long, long history of working and being successful. Apparently this idea originated in Germany a very, very long time ago and it's a method that's been used for, I think it's thousands of years if my research is correct. So it's um, a time-tested method of gardening. So what is the purpose of me doing this kind of gardening? Um, it has to do with wanting to have a drought tolerant garden. That's my number one focus of doing this kind of gardening. So as much as I'm looking at a permaculture kind of method of gardening, I'm also looking at primarily drought tolerant gardening. So where I am putting this, and I'll show you in a second, but my garden is on a sort of a gradual slope that goes down to the hay field and the water just kind of runs off of it when we get a really good rain. So I'm building the hygge culture beds along the bottom of that slope to try to capture that water. And then the idea is that these hygge culture beds act as kind of a sponge and the water will kind of absorb into that and then be released out over time. So the hygge culture beds themselves should require very little watering outside of the rain that nature provides. So that is the whole idea. This is just gonna be my test go to see how um, this method of gardening works for me in my climate. I have a feeling it's gonna work really well. And I'm going to also explore some sheet mulch beds, but that will be a separate video. Basically the same kind of idea, but you use um, cardboard, branches, straw, hay, that kind of thing. Kind of like lasagna gardening, basically the same idea as that. But that'll be something that I'm gonna be trying in the next little while. Oh, I, before I um, head into the sort of meat and potatoes of this video, I wanted to let you guys know that I've started doing live videos over on Instagram. It's difficult for me to do YouTube live videos because of our internet connection. It uses a ton of data and we have limited data a month and with my uploading and everything else, I'm chewing through it pretty quickly. But I found a couple of um, places on my property that I can use my cell phone to do live videos. So if you wanna catch any of those live videos, head over to Instagram and I'm under Little Mountain Ranch 
um, and then you can check out there and I think the way that it works over on Instagram is that you can save your video for 24 hours so you guys would be able to check it out after if you aren't able to catch it when it's actually live um, the one that I just did it was my first kind of test it test video and I'm just kind of trying to figure out where exactly I can get good reception on my cell phone so that I can do live videos for you but it was basically just a little tour of the garden so you can head over to Instagram and check that out or my other posts and I try to post lots of photos up on there about the daily life of what's going on here so when I'm negligent and I don't post over here on YouTube you can catch me over there on Instagram Stage one complete, or I guess this is stage two. So we dug the trench and now we have filled it with large logs on the bottom, smaller sticks and twigs and stuff on the top of it. And now we're gonna go in and have some lunch and cool off because it's the heat of the day right now and it must be close to 30 degrees Celsius out here. So it's very warm. So we'll let it cool off a little bit and then we're gonna head back out here and put the um, hay and manure on top of this. So far, I'm super, super happy with this. Looks really good. Okay, my face is still red from the heat of an hour ago. I stayed inside for an hour to let myself cool off a little bit, but I'm eager to get back out there and get this project done. So I can show you from here, actually. This will give you a good, this will give you kind of a, this will give you an idea. Um, so you can see the logs going here. So you can kind of see the slope of the hill a little bit better from here. So. so that's what we've done and I have gone inside and I'm getting super sunburned. So I went and put on a bunch of natural suntan lotion. Plan now is to scoop up all of the hay mulch and manure and put it on top of this and then cover it all up with dirt. And then I have to wait about a week in order to plant it because I'm still a little bit worried. We haven't had any frost in about a week, but I'm still worried about it and I don't want to put all of my squash and all my tender plants out in the garden beds yet. So let's head down there and get this part done. I don't know if you're like this, but for me, when I'm doing something and I just know it's gonna work, it feels like um, like an epiphany. Like, oh my goodness, why did I not do this before? Why didn't I think of this? That's how I feel about this bed. This just makes so much sense to me. Because of the wood, it's long-term. It's gonna take a long time to break down. And with this amazing, partly composted, manure slash hay that I'm putting in now and the dirt that I'm going to put on top the roots for all the heavy feeders like the squash and the pumpkins and all of that are going to be able to get right down into this stuff and as this whole entire pile just keeps breaking down over the years it's just going to keep feeding my plants I can already tell that this is going to work exactly the way I want it to kind of like a sponge absorb up all the water and then release it over time as it starts to dry out so thank you sweetie 
So I'm really excited about this. This is the first project I've done in a long time and I'm just like, yes, this is definitely gonna work. can say is thank goodness for machinery because I, we just had to shovel this one section on by hand in this heat and it is crazy hot so now we're going to try to use the tractor to cover it all up with the topsoil that we took off of it and then we will be done I'll just rake it out so it looks pretty and then we will be done and ready for planting so is really exciting and I really think it's going to work well for kind of capturing the water that's coming off of the slope of this garden here so yay! raking the prettying it up but you can see back there I'll try to get a better angle for you I think this kind of gives an impression of so the right there that is one and then it goes across this way so they're not super high off the ground and the reason that they're not is because they're dug in the ground you'll see when you're doing um, if you do research on hookah culture beds you'll see that some of them are these big giant mounds and that's because people are building them without digging a trench first and when you dig a trench first um, the ones that are along the bottom side, that's what the ones that I wanted to be quite tall. So they're about two feet above the rest of the level of the garden. Um, and that's to hold the water. I'm going to show you because I think it's going to work super well. So let's go over and check it out. How is it? So right here, this will just give you an idea. Hey Matt, can you run down to the edge of where that, um, that one, just don't run over the bed, okay? Thank you. So you can see, just to give an idea of the downhill slope here. And then go across this way then you'll be able to kind of see how tall that is. So there you go, that gives you an idea of how tall that one um, bed is. So it's actually a pretty huge bed here. And now I just have to go rock pick it and rake it all pretty. But it is way, way too hot to be doing that now. I hope you guys all have a fantastic couple of days until I see you again. Bye everyone.